SZA is a singer-songwriter who rose to fame in the late 2010s with her debut studio album, Control. Although she was grinding for years, she didn't break out until 2017 with her hit song, Love Galore, featuring Travis Scott. The confessional nature of her lyrics helped her become one of the most prominent voices among her generation of female R&B singers. This is SZA's career evolution. SZA was born Solana Imani Rowe on November 8, 1989 in St. Louis, Missouri. She was raised by an Orthodox Sunni Muslim father and a Christian Pan-Africanist mother. Her father was a producer at CNN, whose job made the family relocate to Maplewood, New Jersey. Throughout her childhood, she wore a hijab, but stopped after being bullied. SZA describes her upbringing as strict and sheltered, only being allowed to listen to old jazz music and not being allowed to eat sweets. She eventually learned about different music genres like hip hop and R&B through her older half sister Tiffany and her neighbor and longtime friend Ashley. For most of her childhood, she was a gymnast and dancer. She described herself as shy and awkward. SZA loved writing, but wasn't passionate about it or even considered getting into music. After high school, she interned at Pharrell's clothing company, Billionaire Boys Club. One day in 2008, she was asked to bring clothes to an NERD music video set and ended up being in their Everyone Knows music video. She attended Delaware State University for a short time before dropping out. Next, she settled in New York and started working as a bartender. In 2011, her brother Daniel, an aspiring rapper who went by the pseudonym Manhattan, asked her to sing a few lines for some songs he was working on for his mixtape. Both her brother and boyfriend, who managed her brother, noticed her singing abilities and encouraged her to sing and improve on her skills. In late 2011, SZA's then-boyfriend was sponsoring producers named Christian Rich, who are now signed to Pharrell. They overheard her singing and invited her to join them on stage where she sang Amy Winehouse's Me and Mr. Jones. After that performance, she decided to start making music of her own. Not too long after, she was working with clothing brand 10 Deep. The brand was sponsoring the CMJ New Music Report when she met Top Dog founder of Top Dog Entertainment and president of the label Punch Henderson. Top Dog Entertainment was home to rising stars at the time like Kendrick Lamar, J-Rock, Schoolboy Q, and Ab Soul, where they remain to this day. Members of TDE overheard her friend Ashley blasting some of the music SZA did with her brother Manhattan and thought she had a nice voice. Her and Punch kept in contact after that day, and she would regularly send him music she was working on. She then adopted the pseudonym SZA, inspired by rapper RZA, which is an acronym made out of the Supreme Alphabet. SZA and Punch started working on music together, and SZA recorded and uploaded her first song to YouTube titled, Time Travel Undone. That October, she released her first EP on SoundCloud and YouTube. The alternative R&B EP found its way onto music blogs, receiving critical acclaim, and her Tumblr page helped her build a cult following. SZA constantly went back and forth when it came to deciding what she wanted to do with her life. With music, she was able to find her purpose, and it also served as a form of therapy for her. That year, she left her job as a Sephora sales associate to focus on music full-time. In Interview Magazine, she says, when your parents regulate everything you hear and, and everything you intake, it forces you to get creative in other ways. It sparked the writing bug and the very overactive imagination. Because I've had a lot of time by myself and a lot of time isolated from regular culture, I create my own, end quote. She followed up with another EP in April 2013, simply titled S, 
SZA marketed herself as the more realistic R&B girl who didn't fit the stereotype. She says, I never saw any singers that looked like me, so I never thought I'd have a crowd. In July that year, she was finally signed by TDE, making her the label's first woman and R&B artist. In October, she released her first single through TDE titled Teen Spirit that later featured 50 Cent on the remix. SZA was now generating buzz around the internet and being invited to perform at music festivals. She then embarked on a mini tour with Swedish electronic music band Little Dragon. In early 2014, she released another EP titled Z, the second installation of the incomplete SZA trilogy based on her initials. Z would give SZA her first Billboard entry, debuting at number 39 with 7,000 copies sold in its first week of release. Some of the production was done by the late rapper Mac Miller, while rappers Chance the Rapper, Kendrick Lamar, and Isaiah Rashad were featured on the tracks. Throughout the year, she made a number of feature appearances on records for her label mates, as well as Willow Smith and ASAP Ferg. Sometime in the year, producer Hitboy invited SZA to the studio to write some lyrics for a track he was working on. She had no idea who she was writing it for or if the track would ever see the light of day. Turns out, SZA was co-writing Nicki Minaj and Beyonce's song, Feeling Myself, which was released in December 2014. The call just got put in and then I arrived. I have no idea. Hitboy produced and I wrote the lyrics, so Nicki and Beyonce are singing some of the things that I wrote to it. For the next two years, she focused on releasing her debut album titled A to complete the trilogy. In between that time, she was featured on songs for Wale and Travis Scott, who was still up and coming, and wrote and sang on the song Consideration for Rihanna's 2016 album Anti. In March 2016, Punch teased SZA's debut album to Billboard. He said, It's phenomenal. Between her last album and this one, there's so much clarity in her vocals and her tone. It's much more deliberate than it was on Z. There was a lot of ambient, vibey, moody type sounding records on that album. With this one, she's giving you her with a level of clarity that you haven't heard from her yet. But SZA was having issues with Top Dog Entertainment and aired out her frustration for the delays on her album, which was originally scheduled to be released in late 2015. On Twitter, she wrote, I actually quit. Punch can release my album if he ever feels like it. Y'all be blessed. To which he responded with a photo of the Joker with the caption, LOL. A week after the incident, she said, I'll probably just do something different, something visual, probably film. I'm really frustrated and I'm kind of over it. I have a lot of anxiety and there's a lot going on in my life. Me and Punch never get along. That's every day. But little did SZA know, her breakout moment was right around the corner. In January 2017, SZA released her song, Drew Barrymore, as the lead single for her debut album. I get so lonely, I forget where I'm worth We get so lonely, we pretend that I'm enough for you outside, baby yes. However, the single didn't generate much buzz at the time of its release And it failed to chart In April, she announced that she signed a record deal with RCA Records A subsidiary of Sony Entertainment That same month, she formally released her song Love Galore featuring Travis Scott after first premiering the track on Jimmy Kimmel Live back in January. Love Galore became her breakout hit with critical acclaim. The single rose to number 32 on the Billboard Hot 100 in its 17th week and number one on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. Her debut album, Control, was finally released on June 9th, debuting at number three with over 60,000 units sold in the first week. SZA was more vulnerable and unfiltered on Control compared to her prior work, exploring topics like relationships and self-esteem and sharing intimate stories. 
Control was filled with pop culture references and spoken word interludes by her mother and grandmother. The songs on the album collectively accumulated 50 million streams that week. Music from Control also ended up on Issa Rae's HBO show Insecure. One song in particular titled The Weeknd became so popular that RCA decided to release it as a single in September that year, and it charted higher than Love Galore. Just keep him satisfied through the weekend. We'll take Wednesday, Thursday, then just send him my way. Think I got it also topped the hot RB songs chart and was certified triple platinum. The other singles, Broken Clocks and Garden, also found some success on the charts. You keep me down. Call me on my bullshit. In August, she embarked on her very own headlining tour across North America that concluded in December. She also collaborated with Maroon 5 on their What Lovers Do single, and this marked her first top 10 hit. SZA received five Grammy nominations for Best New Artist, Best Urban Contemporary Album, Best R&B Song for Supermodel, Best R&B Performance for The Weeknd, and Best Rap Sung Performance for Love Galore. Unfortunately, she didn't walk away with any trophies at the 2018 ceremony, and this left her devastated. In early 2019, she recorded the songs All the Stars with her TDE label mate Kendrick Lamar for the Black Panther soundtrack, which was another multi-platinum hit, peaking at number seven. All the Stars received a number of accolades, including four nominations at the 61st Grammy Awards and an Oscar nomination for Best Original Song. That year, she made an appearance on Cardi B's debut album, Invasion of Privacy, on the track I Do. And the song peaked at number 23, making this her fifth top 40 hit. She would continue to make feature appearances on tracks throughout 2019. But three years after Control, SZA started facing issues with her label again. She was also dealing with tragedy. In early 2019, her grandmother Norma's health started declining. She died in June that year at age 90, and five months later, in November, SZA's aunt died unexpectedly. My grandma was like my best friend. It was the longest five months of my life. I didn't want to make music. I didn't. I was just trying not to kill myself and not quit, period. Because it was really hard and lonely. I've buried so many people in my life, you would think that I would be used to it or just have a threshold. But my grandma broke the threshold for me. It was so weird to not have any control over anything." End quote. SZA says she healed her depression through exercise and wellness, like practicing Pilates, crystals, meditation, and sound bowls. In August 2020, she suggested that her label was refusing to release music to kick off her sophomore album and call the situation hostile. She said, at this point, y'all gotta ask Punch. I've done all I can do. Less than a month later, with little to no promo, she released the single, Hit Different, featuring Ty Dolla Sign, produced by the Neptunes. Despite not having much promotion, the track was streamed over 13.3 million times and debuted at number 29 on Billboard's Hot 100. This past year, or 2021, marked another successful year for the singer. Days before the year started, she released another single titled, Good Days. On February 1st, the song rose to number 9 on Billboard's Hot 100, becoming SZA's first solo single to reach the top 10 on the Hot 100 and third overall. Then she was featured on the song of the summer, Kiss Me More by Doja Cat, which peaked at number 3 in America 
and became the longest running all female top 10 hit in the chart's history for charting for more than 24 weeks within the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100. Give me a book, need the Gucci store. Gucci limit, now you ain't good enough. All your niggas said that you lost me. Yet and still, SZA, who was signed to both RCA and Top Dog Entertainment, was frustrated with the lack of promotion for her solo projects. She never elaborated on which label she was referring to. And if you guys aren't familiar with RCA Records, artists like Tinashe, Miley Cyrus, and Zayn Malik have spoken out in the past about the record label not pushing their music. She also hinted that her next album would be her last. In a Flaunt magazine interview, she said, I'm still miserable. My world got so much smaller so fast. I have so much to write about. I feel like I'm in a cage. I'm making the best album of my life for this next album. And I know that because it's going to be my last album. As of October 2021, SZA has yet to release her sophomore album. But no one could ever discredit what she was able to accomplish in a matter of five years. SZA helped broaden the sound of R&B at a time when the genre was declining in popularity. She will forever be known as one of the most prominent voices among her generation of female R&B artists. What are your favorite records by SZA? And also, what other artists should I cover on the next Career Evolution video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.